welcome to this animal kingdom series in this series we will be completing chapter 4 of class 11th animal kingdom part by part so this is the part 1 where we will go over the basics of classification and we will do phylum porifera and nidaria so let, let's just go over the first of all basics which we have done in previous chapters so you should know what is taxonomy you should know systematics, you should know what's a taxa, you should know uh, different for, uh, forms of classification. Who was the father of taxonomy? Carl Linnaeus. And uh, you know who gave five kingdom classification? R.H. Whittaker. And one more important fact which is not given in your NCRT. Who proposed six kingdom classification? Six kingdom in six kingdom classification bacteria is further divided into arc bacteria and u bacteria this was proposed by Carl Vos okay keep this is not in NCRT but it's important next so from the basis of classification we use different indicators anatomical and physiological indi indicators to as a basis of classification like arrangement of cells body symmetry nature of coelom patterns of digestive circulatory and reproductive system so as you must know modern accepted system of systematics modern accepted branch of systematics or modern accepted school of systematics is the phylogenetic system so in the phylogenetic system if two organisms are supposed to be placed in one taxa for example humans homo sapiens and monkeys macaca are placed in the order primata from it is this is from your first chapter okay humans have the order primata you, you should know this so that means humans and monkeys homo sapiens and macaca should have a common ancestor okay so the first primate they should have a common ancestor all primates have a common ancestor so this is phylogenetic that's why there is a tree of evolution yeah i i, I will Now, okay, coming back to the coming back to NCRT, arrangement of cells. These are the basis of classification. Arrangement of cells. How are cells arranged? Very basic. Three levels of organization of cells. Cellular tissue organ. You already know. Cellular level of organization. Single cells. There are no tissues. Single cells. They are loose or or loose aggregates of cells. They perform different functions in the human body. Tissue level. Cells are arranged in tissues and specialized to perform functions and organ level in which tissues are arranged in a particular pattern to make an organ which is specialized for a specific functions. Uh, for example, stomach has different types of tissues and cells. So stomach is an organ which performs a function. It is made up of tissues which are further made up of cells, very basic. I will will learn the examples later for now it's okay next symmetry body symmetry there are two types which you should know bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry again this is very basic radial symmetry is seen in lower organisms and bilateral symmetry in us okay remember remember this example humans are bilaterally symmetrical and we are higher organisms we are complex organisms so Bilateral symmetry is seen in complex organisms. For example, crab. In crab, you can only divide the crab in one plane. In this plane, you can divide the crab in this plane. Plane A, B. This is not symmetrical. Okay. 
so for example this plane c d so in plane c d this side left side is symmetrical to right side but in plane a b this left side is not symmetrical to this right side right uh, this, this is very basic right you can see graph this side is symmetrical to this and it can only be you can only find symmetry in one plane that is cd but if you see organisms like this like it this is a very basic body plan of an organism which seems to be some form of a mollusk you can see that this is plane a plane b and you can divide its body by different planes this like say this is plane c this side is symmetrical to this side if you divide it by plane b also then this side will be symmetrical to this side and if you divide it by plane c then this side is symmetrical to left side right side so this shows radial symmetry radial symmetry you can divide by any radius and it's symmetrical bilateral symmetry you can divide it by only one radius now an easy trick to remember which phylum the organisms of which phylum are radially symmetrical and organisms of which phylum is bilaterally symmetrical is remembering examples of those organisms for example now if i want to know whether tenophora is radially symmetrical or bilaterally symmetrical okay so how will i do this first of all we will we'll learn about different organisms so you will be able to do this too so first of all i will remember a, an organism from the phylum tenophora for example i will remember pleubarchia which is an organism from tenophora i will remember this diagram in my mind and then i will see if this organism is radially symmetrical or bilaterally symmetrical so if i divide it by this plane it is symmetrical and i divide it by any other plane it will also be symmetrical because this is a ball because this is a ball shaped organism it's a pleubarchia so that's why since pleubarchia is radially symmetrical that means tenophoras are radially symmetrical very simple next uh, moving further digestive system so some organisms have incomplete digestive system some organisms have complete digestive system what is incomplete digestive system in incomplete digestive system there is one uh, there is only one mouth or stoma or any opening through which food enters and part unused part exits out of the same stoma and in complete digestive system there is one mouth or stoma and then there is one excretory organ so the food enters from one opening gets processed and goes out through the other this is complete digestion system in humans we see complete digestive system in nidarias we see incomplete digestive system moving ahead next circulatory system so for example in cockroaches there is something called open circulatory system in open circulatory system all the organs are directly bathed into blood just imagine it this way all the organs are bathed into blood and there is there are no specific veins or uh, veins or vessels through which blood is specifically pumped heart just directly pumps uh, the blood to tissues and organs in higher organisms so this is the heart and it pumps blood through veins to different organs okay so this is closed circulatory system since it has vein this is open circulatory system since there are no veins now this is done next organ layers so in uh, animals there are two types of organ layers that you observe one diploblastic next triploblastic uh, it's remember easy to remember names of the layer first of all ecto means outer derm means cell layer so this is outer cell layer endo means inner derm means cell layer inner cell layer meso means middle derm means cell layer in triploblastic animals like us there is 
a mesoderm present which is the middle cell, cell layer in diploblastic animals mesoderm instead of mesoderm there is a jelly layer called mesoglia okay mesoglia meso is middle and glia you, you can think of it's like a gel like substances not not exactly not this is not etymologically correct but you can think of it like this you can remember it like this mesoglia so this is diploblastic animal triploblastic animal this is very basic that's why i'm i'm going fast there's nothing much to learn in this just read ncrt one or two times and this should be done esot this is new so in in triploblastic animals there are three types of coelomate coelomate cavities one coelomate pseudo coelomate a coelomate okay in in coelomate coelom a layer a cavity is present in between mesoderm okay you, you should see this in between mesoderm this this is a conf this uh, this confuses people okay coelom in coelomates there is a cavity which is lined by mesoderm it is not present between ectoderm and mesoderm it is present inside mesoderm this is a mesodermic layer this is a mesodermic layer and this is coelom this is not present between ectoderm or mesoderm and this is not present between mesoderm and endoderm it is present inside the mesoderm in pseudo coelomates there are pockets of mesoderm in which coelom is present very simple okay there are scattered packets there are scattered pouches of mesoderm between which coelom or body cavity is present in a coelomate body cavity is not present in all, at all all the layers are joint next segmentation so what what is metameric segmentation in some organisms like annelids which are earthworms they show bodily segmentations and their organs repeat in segments so for example you know if you cut an earthworm it will regrow because it has because one part of earthworm has all the organs it needs to form a complete living organism have you ever tried if you if you ever cut a earthworm there there will be there, there will just be two more earthworms all the cut parts will regenerate and both of the earthworms will exist as individual entities so how does this work for example let's say this is a segment and this is a segment this segment has organ a organ b organ c this segment will also have organ a organ b organ c and this segment will also have organ a organ b organ c so if you cut this earthworm in this plane this has all the organs it needs to live and it will regenerate it will make another so it will make more segments with a b c a b c a b c this is this is how an earthworm regenerate this, this because it shows segmentation body is externally okay I remember this externally and internally both divided into segments serial repetition of at least some organs uh, not all but at least some organs and in most cases vital organs all the vital organs are present next notochord this will be important later so in chordates okay this is specifically for chordates a mesodermally derived structure is present notochord is derived from mesoderm on the dorsal side you you know look at yourself you you have a vertebral column on the dorsal side so mesoderm is present on the dorsal side so these animals are called chordates which is a phylum now why do we call our mesodermally derived rod like structure vertebrate and not notochord so it this will come in later but just remember in the phylum chordate there are three sub phylums first tunicata or eurocordata even if you don't understand this right now uh, don't worry 
if this will come in later tunicata then branchiostoma and sorry tunicata and cephalochordata vertebrata so the all of these subphylums have different arrangement different arrangement of notochord and all of them show notochord in different stages of life we are vertebrata we are in this subphylum vertebrates so the thing is in vertebrata notochord is only present in embryonical stage in adult forms the notochord is converted to vertebrae vertebral column cephalochordata and in tunicata have different cephalochordata notochord is present from head to tail therefore cephalo means head and chordata means notochord so from head to tail they have notochord and in tunicata and urochordata they have a primitive form of notochord development pattern we'll check it later but your vertebral column is a further development of notochord it has developed these are these are subphylums by the way okay it, it is developed from the mesoderm now that so, so this was all the basic parts you needed to know these these were all the uh, basics very simple you might have already learned this in your ninth grade or previous classes first of all let's just revise again we follow the phylogenetic system of classification arrangement of cells three types cellular tissue organ body symmetry radial bilateral nature of coal nature of coelom you have pseudo coelomates a coelomates and coelomates the pattern of digestive system you know you can either have incomplete digestion or complete digestion Cir circulatory system um, you can have either open system or closed system and then reproductive system so in reproductive systems let me find okay over here in reproductive systems you can either have asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction and in sexual reproduction also sexual reproduction you can have two types of organisms first which has which so separation of sexes most of the higher organisms they have this so separation of sexes they have either a male or female organism is either male or female or else you can have organisms which do not show separation of sexes such organisms are called hermaphrodites like earthworms they 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 are both male they have both male sex organs and female sex organs at the same time they are hermaphrodites like earthworm how 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 did, how did we get the name hermaphrodites i well actually hermaphrodite is actually a mixture of two greek gods hermes which is a male god and aphrodite which is a female god since these organisms have both organs of males and females they are they are a mixture of both hermes herma and aphrodite hermaphrodite hermaphrodite can remember it like that now let's look at all the phylums of organisms phylum porifera nidaria or silenterata tinophora platyelminthes ascalaminthes annelids arthropod mollusca echinodermata hemichordata chordata now first of all this may seem very complex especially if you don't remember anything from 9th standard biology you had classification of organisms in 9th standard biology if you don't remember anything which in most cases people don't it's okay so if you are watching this video for the first time listen carefully if you are a dropper or in 12th grade uh, you can maybe skip this part so first of all let me just familiarize you with all the phylums okay first of all porifera sponges sea sponges they belong to porifera so just basic idea next nidaria jellyfishes okay next tinophora tinophora 
dinophora they are special type of organisms okay which are bioluminescent that means they show light and they usually have the structure they look very much like a jellyfish so there will be a ball like head and then this this tail like structure okay they they are bioluminescent next we have platyelminthes platyelminthes they are flat worms so you remember it like this platy flatty flat worms next ascalaminthes okay ascalaminthes or they are your millipedes multipedes i will i tell you tra easy trick to remember names later just for now just to get familiarized with this next annelids they are your earthworms okay so ascalaminthes are before annelids people get confused annelids you know uh, anis anus in latin means little ring it's the it's the same root for your word anus also so annelids they are ring like worms not ring worm they are ring like worms they are little circular round cylindrical worms so you can remember and arthropoda everybody knows insects belong to this phylum insectas arthropoda mollusca also you must you must already know mollusca this um, uh, octopuses okay octopus and uh, all these shellfishes etc they belong to mollusks next echinodermata echinodermata starfish starfishes belongs to this phylum echinodermata hemichordata hemichordata a special organism called balonoglossus that, that is also given in your ninth grade textbook you might remember this okay even if you don't it's okay chordata us now in chordata in your textbook there are three subphylums which are tunicata or eurochordata as told you cephalochordata and vertebrata in vertebrata there are four specific classes that you need to know okay that will come later now let's get a now since you got a basic idea of all of it and let's start with the first phylum porifera porifera are sponges as i said now it is one of the most basic organisms they so basic body parts are they radially symmetrical bilaterally symmetrical no does this look radially symmetrical or bilaterally symmetrical to you it's nothing it's actually asymmetrical okay porifera are the only phylum in uh, all of the animal kingdom it shows no symmetry they are asymmetrical organisms next tissue level or organ level no nothing they are cellular level organisms they so basic cellular structure okay but they are, they are multicellular okay but, but they are cellular organisms so there are no tissues most distinctive part about them is they have a water transport system okay so they have water transport system and they have different body structures so water enters to minute pores called ostia you can look at this ostia these are minute pores through which water enters them okay ostia into a central cavity called os spongiosseol so it enters through ostia into a central cavity called spongiosseol just remember minute pores ostia through which water enters it goes through spongiosseal and it goes out through osculum i will show you a diagram so you can see the diagram here of different body structures of a of porifera different body structure three types of body structure main body structures you can be seen asconoid leuconoid and siconoid now sicon ascon and leucon these are examples of different types of sponges but you can remember it like that but but siconoid oid oid is a suffix for like so sicon like body structure 
साइकॉन शोस साइकॉन साइकॉन लाइक बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर सो व्हाट इज द बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ साइकॉन साइकॉनोइड बिकॉज इट्स बेस्ड ऑन साइकॉन राइट सो साइकॉनोइड बॉडी स्ट्रक्चर एंड एस्कॉन लाइक इज शोन बाय एस्कॉन मोस्ट सिंपलेस्ट एस्कॉनोइड साइकॉनोइड एंड देन ल्यूकॉनोइड मूविंग अहेड यू शुड नो दीज थ्री टर्म्स ऑस्टिया स्पॉन्जोसिल ऑस्कुलम now this is the, this is for water transport okay the part of what is the pathway of water transport helpful for what is the uh, pathway of water cycle helpful for it is helpful for food gathering respiratory exchange and removal of waste it is not helpful for it is not helpful for reproduction so sponges form gametes okay but the water transport system is not helpful for transport of gametes remember only three functions food gathering you can even get confused over here respiratory and removal of waste three functions of water transport system ostia mouth spongocele cavity osculum etc next the body of a porifera is lined by collar cells or cyanocytes Cano for collar, sites for cell. Okay, okay, and also if if you find it hard to remember the word sponge or seal, seal is many times used as a term for body cavity and spongeo sponges so sponges body cavity. Remember it as sponges stomach it's because you know seal is a word used for body cavity stomach. Okay, food gathering cano sites or collar cells coming. only one side of cyanocyte is open to the water channel in cyconoid body style a little more compartmentalization is present so surface area is used much more effectively water can come in and different cells of cyanocytes are functioning on it in leuconoid body structure which is seen in leucon it is a type of sponge there is a much more developed cyanocyte chamber system in which the water goes through each chamber and it is layered by different cyanocytes it is surrounded by different cyanocytes each chamber is surrounded by cyanocyte and water is used up much more effectively now remember the digestion is intracellular of course because they they can they can digest things outside they take water in and digestion is intracellular next body is supported by skeleton made up of spicules and spongin so there are many s s sponge sponge words over here don't get confused spicules or sponge in so the skeletal system in porifera is made up of spicules and sponge in fibers sexes are not separate hermaphrodite i have already told you these are primitive organisms in them sexes are not separate they are hermaphrodite hermaphrodite eggs and sperms are produced by same individual sponges reproduce asexually by fragmentation okay i yeah, remember this asexually by fragmentation sexually by gamete formation you know one sponge can produce both male and female gametes because they are hermaphrodite so they produce both gametes now there there is fertilization which is internal and internal fertilization means it happens inside the body surface for example in humans also the fertilization is internal in fishes for example if you see in certain documentaries the female will lay eggs so he releases male sperms above these eggs and the, the sperms later each reach the egg in the water so it, there is no internal fertilization the fertilization does not happen inside the body of the female but it happens in the in open in the water body now fertilization is internal and development is indirect in porifera now this is actually important and sort of this confusing point for development is indirect what does it mean to be have indirect development indirect development means the larval stage will be different from the adult stage okay the larval stage will be different from the adult stage this is indirect development for example a uh, butterfly larva is 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 a caterpillar it is different from a butterfly okay so this is indirect development same way porifera's larvae are different they look like this 
they have two main types of larvae amphiblastula and phycoblastula platyhelminthoblastula they have different types of larvae and they have different and they have different ways in which those larvae are formed okay you can see these diagrams just for remembering so remember these three things they reproduce asexually by fragmentation next sexual formation uh, sorry fertilization is internal which is means inside the body and next development is indirect that means their larvae stage they looks different from their adult stage examples okay example remember this cycon cypia okay this is impo important from competitive point of view this is important sometimes and not only this sometimes they has common names also so for example they will have th this kind of match the following questions if you will see previous year neat questions a b c d e f and they will ask you to match the fo match these following match common names with uh, scientific names and in option there will be like 1 2 Three, four, four options. So option A with E in this option A matches with E, or option C with E, second option, and so on, and so on. So if you see previous year questions, they have questions like match the following type questions in which each option there are options and it correlates with different type. Anyways, that is not important. What is important is you know what what these options means. First of all. all the options come from ncrt so all every all the examples come from ncrt so you need to know this cycon cycon we just saw different body structures what are the three body structures ascon cycon leucon so cycon is example and cycon's english normal name is cypia cypia different languages have different uh, normal name in english cypia cycon cypia cy cy remember it like that next spongilla u spongia so how you can remember u spongia is whenever there is a prefix u or neo it means new or more developed so u for example in eukaryotes new eukaryotes are more developed eukaryotes means new eukaryotes are more developed eukaryotes so u spongia means a much more developed variety of sponge and its common name is bath sponge so you can remember it like this bath is a human creation so it's better than river or sea because bath is an artificial new human creation so bath sponge it's a new sponge yeah it's it's a more developed version of sponge yeah spongilla fresh water sponge um fresh water sponge you have to remember it by yourself or else watch some watch some uh, youtube videos with uh, which about sponges or, or else google images of spongilla okay so you can remember it like this new spongilla bath sponge which is new newer more developed sponge than the aquatic farms okay you know those bath so new spongilla bath sponge phylum coelenterata or cnidaria now coelenterates these are aquatic mostly marine now why is, what is mostly marine so there are there will be few types of habitats first of all in aquatic animals marine which means sea they will live in sea then sea then there there will be some like fresh water which means river okay river what's the difference what's the difference between these body uh, water bodies first of all sea will have salt high salt concentration fresh water beings cannot live in high salt concentration river will have low salt concentration so fresh water beings can live only in river marine beings can live in sea which has high salt concentration so mostly marine means cnidaria and cnidaria live in high salt water concentration environment concentrated environments 
so if it if the question comes something like uh, sealant rates can can sealant rates live in a high salt water concentration yeah true they can live in high salt water concentration they are sessile or free swimming we'll come to this part next radially symmetrical organisms now as i've told you well in order to know whether a f- organisms from a phylum are radially symmetrical or bilaterally symmetrical remember the examples aurelius adams here i will tell you a trick to remember the examples later first of all look at this it's aurelius okay you can divide it by this plane you can divide it by this plane plane and you can divide it by a plane 90 degrees to this plane it will have the same orientation divided by any plane same orientation so these are radially symmetrical divided by this plane divided by just 3d rotate this image in your head and you can even if you divide it it will have the same orientation so these are radially symmetrical organisms or you can remember it directly radially symmetrical organism now how do they get the name nidaria from special kind of cells called nidoblast or nidocytes nidoblasts and nidocytes which have a stinging capsule or nematocyst so first of all these nema uh, nidoblast is the name of the cell don't get confused and what is the name of the sing- stinging capsule need nematocysts now since there are cysts people may con- get confused that nematocysts are a different type of cell no nematocysts are the stinging capsule nidocytes and nidoblast if there is nido nido then it's a cell nidoblast nidocytes are cell nematocysts are stinging capsule look at this this is a cell nematoblast sorry nidoblast and this orange thing this is nematocyst it is present inside the nemato sorry nidoblast these are stinging rays so if it has to sting this contains all the toxin and these stingers will come out and it will sting you this is the nucleus this is the tail this thread like structure is called lasso okay the function is not important it's actually complicated just remember this it has a thread like structure called lasso if you want you can see the co- co- function on google the function and it actually it will confuse you just remember this is nematocyst stinging rays nucleus and these are the parts of a nidoblast remember that nematocysts are not cell they are part of the cell they are part of they are part of nidoblasts which are the cell uh what are the functions of nidoblast anchorage defense capture of prey three functions anchorage defense capture of prey nidarians they are, they are tissue level and diploblastic diploblastic means do they have mesoderm do nidarians have mesoderm no they don't have mesoderm what do they have in place of mesoderm they have glia mesoglia in place of m- uh, mesoderm since they are diploblastic al- uh, organisms they have also they have tissue level of organization little more developed from porifera they have central gastrovascular Uh, opening with a single opening they have same central gastrovascular cavity with single opening that means digestive system only has one opening hypostome food comes in through this and goes up to the same hypostome digestion is extracellular so in this and intracellular also so in this in some organisms they release specific enzymes which digest their food particle outside their body only in humans digestion happens inside because all our hormones uh, all, all our enzymes for example saliva which are salivary amylase are inside us these release the enzymes outside the body 
and their digestion happens outside also okay so they are extracellular and intracellular some of the nidarians like corals have skeleton composed of calcium carbonate in 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 porifera what was the skeleton composed of spicules and spongin fibers what are the skeletons composed of in corals calcium carbonate CaCO3 nidarians exhibit two basic body form okay now this is confusing part and important part they have two basic body parts polyp and medusa now how can you remember this first of all you should know where this terms came from polyp medusa medusa so it's a two basic body forms medusa and this is polyp so the term these terms actually came from ancient greek mythologies okay this medusa you, i will uh, i will show you an image on screen this is an image of medusa okay medu and you can also see she has a head full of snakes okay so in medusa body forms these two structures they look like her it looks like her head which is full of snakes these two structures they look like snakes so they have a snake like structures coming from head so this is why this body form is called medusa body form next this body form is called polyp body form okay because it's in it's it's attached to one place polyp body form cannot move okay medusa body form since you know that they have these sessile structures attached to their head okay with hair like structure attached to their head they can move because they have these jellyfish like structures they they look like jellyfish actually actually aurelis is actually a jellyfish only I already told you nidarians jellyfish okay so they can move these forms polyp forms they can't move they are attached because they don't have this motile structures which are present in medulla okay now aurelia is one of the examples of examples of medusa body form this one so in in latin and greek or latin aurelia aurus aurora aurora means light so this if you look at if you have seen those images of jellyfish going upside like the those those fiction those images of jellyfish you can find in stock photos stock photos photos also they have their uh, what do you call these motile structures in uh, it looks like rays of light coming towards you okay so you can remember it like this aura like rays of light so this has this uh, jellyfish has this rays of light coming so this is aurelia medusa these rays like ray like motile structures also look like snake in medusa's head so they are also called medusa and polyp they are static okay now these these they also so one uh, very interesting property it is called alternation of generation okay so alternation of generation means that one species of nidarians actually exist in both forms polyp and medulla how in alternation of generation one sessile polyp form will give rise to a free swimming means motile umbrella shaped okay they have used the term umbrella shaped it is important umbrella shape it looks like a rays umbrella shape for motile jellyfish so polyps since they can't move they can't sexually reproduce they will give rise to a medusa form asexually because they can't move now medusa they can move so they will have sexual reproduction and through the sexual reproduction they will give rise to another polyp form now polyp form again 
through asexual reproduction because it can't move will give rise to a medusa now medusa because it can move it is motile it can do asexual reproduction it will give rise to a polyp form so you see if one generation is polyp and uh, if if one generation is polyp and uh, non motile it give rise to a it give rise to a medusa in the other generation which is motile and sexually reproduction reproducing so there is an alternation of generation polyp to medusa to polyp to medusa this is also called metagenesis don't don't forget this term metagenesis okay male polyps reduce medusa asexually and medusa form polyp sexually and now examples these examples you have to learn it but i can make it a bit bit easier you have to learn it by yourself so faisalia portuguese man of war p p faisalia portuguese man of war the examples you have to remember by yourself and next adamsia a a adamsia sea anemone okay next pen p e n pen to wala c pen 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 next gorgonia sea fan you can remember this by yourself right next meandrina meandrina or brain coral so meandrina if you will see few images of meandrina online i will put them up put them up they look like brain actually they look like those turns in brains okay they look like the arrangement of human brain so therefore meanderina is called brain coral that's it for this part if you have any doubt or you want me to explain something better i know i gave few extra examples okay these may not suit everyone this start of learning in which there are very like too many examples some people make it confused you can tell me in the comments if if this is suitable or not and if you have any doubts in next part we will be doing tinophora platyhelminthes annelid and ascelminthes thank you for watching